In this video, you will learn another important metric used to assess the valuation of a company. This metric is known as price to free cash flow. Why is valuation important? Understanding how much a company is worth can help us decide whether we should buy it. If the cost of investment is well above what a company is worth, it is better to wait until the company's valuation drops. Before we discuss price to free cash flow, we first need to understand what free cash flow is. In our last video, Ben and Maggie offered competing investment opportunities. To better understand cash flow, let's look more closely at Ben's coffee shop. In the last video, he told you his coffee shop earned $250,000 per year. Sounds good, right? During his presentation, you ask him to explain the expenses of running his shop. He informs you that the supplies such as coffee beans, milk, and sugar cost him $40,000 last year. He paid out $35,000 to his part-time barista who works with him, $25,000 in mortgage, $2,000 for repairs, and $3,000 in equipment, such as specialty machines he uses to make the drinks. After all of his expenses and taxes are accounted for, the remaining balance is $50,000. This $50,000 is what we call free cash flow. It is the money a company has left over after accounting for expenses, taxes, and capital expenditures like a building or equipment. Free cash flow is the money not required for operations or investment. Ben has $50,000 to further expand his coffee shop, reduce his debt further, or distribute to shareholders. This might mean a dividend to someone like you. A dividend is a payment made to individuals who own part or all of a company. Because you would own 10% of his company, if the coffee shop paid out all $50,000 of the free cash flow, you would receive $5,000 for that year. Now that we know what free cash flow is, what is price to free cash flow? Like price to earnings, it is a ratio used for valuing a company. It shows how much you are paying compared to the amount of cash a company can generate. More spare cash after expenses means more cash they can give back to you in a dividend, reinvest in their business, or more cash for share buybacks. Low price to free cash flow ratios typically mean the shares are undervalued and prices will soon increase. As you know from episode 1, Ben offered you 10% of his company for $500,000. This is our price. The free cash flow was $50,000. Price to free cash flow is price divided by free cash flow. So $500,000 divided by $5,000, or 10% of the $50,000 of company free cash flow, is 100. Your price to free cash flow ratio is 100. While price to free cash flow ratios vary by industry, 100 is typically very high. Maggie runs her numbers by you as well. She offered you 10% of her company for $225,000. Her earnings are about $150,000 per year. Her shop is small, and she owns it outright. She operates the store entirely by herself, has big markups on her specialty items, and keeps expenses low. She explains that the free cash flow for her company is $120,000. The free cash flow for your 10% share of the company is $12,000. That's 10% of the $120,000 of free cash flow. $225,000 divided by $12,000 is 18.75. In summary, Ben's price to free cash flow ratio was a 100, whereas Maggie's was an 18.75. Maggie's valuation, based on price to free cash flow, is significantly better. Ben's coffee shop looks overvalued. Based on this, we might want to wait to invest in Ben's coffee shop until he offers a lower price, or we can consider other investments altogether. Let's apply this to a real company. Many of you are familiar with Johnson & Johnson. Although some of you may be more familiar with a few of their products in the store, like baby powder or shampoo, Johnson & Johnson, at the time I made this video, is a $293 billion company that develops, manufactures, and sells products in the healthcare field. Their products fall into three segments, consumer, pharmaceutical, and medical devices. Let's take a look at their price to free cash flow on a great free website, macrotrends.net. What we are looking at here is Johnson & Johnson's share price, free cash flow per share, 
and price to free cash flow ratio from 2007 until 2020. This allows us to not only see the current data, but compare it to its historical price to free cash flow. There are a couple of things to look at which are important. First, free cash flow has been steadily increasing from 2007 until 2020. Although there have been periods where it declined, the overall trend is increasing free cash flow. This means Johnson & Johnson is in a healthy position financially and has extra money to continue increasing its dividend for investors like us. Free cash flow was $9.54 in 2007, but was $20.59 at the end of 2019. In other words, it doubled during that time period. I am showing you the fourth quarter for 2019 because the free cash flow for the first quarter of 2020 has not been reported yet. We can see that the price to free cash flow is 5.4. Is that good? While it is certainly better than Ben's Cafe and Maggie Mart, those companies are not $293 billion pharmaceutical companies. We want to ensure it is a good value for the company it is, so let's compare it first to itself. We can see the price to free cash flow is currently the best it has been since 2015. This would be the best deal we would get in terms of free cash flow in 5 years. If we look at prior years, we see this number is actually fairly average to a little above average. Let's compare this to some of its competitors. If you're not sure whether a valuation metric is good for a company, consider seeing how its rivals are doing. Some of Johnson & Johnson's rivals include Pfizer, Merck & Company, Eli Lilly & Company, and AbbVie. This chart compares the price to free cash flow for all five companies. The blue line is Johnson & Johnson. We can see that it is favorable compared to most of its rivals. This is a good sign for Johnson & Johnson's valuation. Based on this metric, it also tells me that Merck and Eli Lilly might be overvalued and AbbVie might be undervalued. We see at the beginning of 2015, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Merck, and AbbVie were very similar in price to free cash flow. If we take a closer look at AbbVie, its free cash flow increased from $6.28 to $20.63 during this time period. That's better than Johnson & Johnson. During this time of rapid free cash flow growth, its share price declined, resulting in a very attractive price to free cash flow ratio. Let's take another look at that comparison chart. While AbbVie's price to free cash flow has improved since early 2015, Merck went up significantly. What happened? Let's take a quick look. In early 2015, Merck's free cash flow was $7.23. It has since increased very minimally to $7.28. Thus, while Johnson & Johnson has increased steadily and AbbVie went up dramatically, Merck barely had any improvement in free cash flow. Despite this, the price per share went up throughout that period, resulting in an ever-increasing price to free cash flow ratio. While we never want to consider only a single point of data when determining the valuation of a company or whether to invest, based on price to free cash flow alone, we see that AbbVie and Johnson & Johnson are more attractive than Merck or Eli Lilly. That wraps up our introduction to price to free cash flow today. If you would like a video explaining how to calculate price to free cash flow yourself, or would like to learn more advanced information about price to free cash flow, please let me know in the comments below.